Hello and welcome to How to Play at Mapping Key Gaming. My name is E, and today we're going to learn how to play Disney's Sidekicks. Disney Sidekicks is a 2-4 player game for ages 8 and up and plays approximately 40 minutes. Now, the one thing that I do have to let you know is to go down um, into the description. I have the link for the most up-to-date rulebook. The rulebook that comes inside the box is incorrect. If you like this kind of content, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Now, how to play Disney Sidekicks. I think the best way how to learn how to play is to start at the end, meaning how do you win and how do you lose. Okay, winning, is, there's only one way to win and you have to do two things. One is to defeat one of the villains that's out on the board. The second part is to unlock unlock one of the locks on the castle and then save a hero. In this case for for Tinkerbell, it would be Peter Pan. So so it doesn't matter where where he is out on the board. Uh, you know, cuz he he's supposed to be inside the castle. I don't like to put them inside the castle because you're going to be putting things on top of the towers. And I don't want to lift this up to, to take things. It, it's easier if you just put them out on the side. So you go and you, you save your hero. And you can you can unlock both, both locks or as many locks as you want. But you can only save your hero. In, in a game like this, Pumbaa here would have to come to this spot right here. That is adjacent to the castle. And then spend five stars to go and... Or no, not spend five stars, I'm sorry. Yeah, use the save a hero action and he'll he'll get the save Simba. And so once all the heroes have been saved from the castle and one of the villains is defeated, then you win. Now, how you lose? Well, there's quite a few ways on how to lose in this game. <laughs> okay. There are four possible ways of losing this game. One is that your hero, your sidekick's health gets depleted to zero, and then and then the game is over. It doesn't matter which sidekick, as long as any one of them goes to zero, then the game is over. The second way, there are these bridges here that connect the different regions. Now, if these bridges get destroyed, there are villain cards that destroy bridges. If three of these bridges get destroyed, then the game is also over. The third way is if the castle towers get filled with villagers and guards. There are five spots here on the, on the castle, so you would need five villagers or five guards or any combination to, to lose the game. And then the final way of losing the game is that certain villains have their own win conditions you know because of course they have their own like master plan or whatever and so once they complete that master plan then the uh, the game is over as well so now let's talk about the the different spaces around the board and how the villagers and the guards spawn on different villain cards there's going to be text that talks about spawning villagers into different locations and guards so just to let you know there is a threshold on each location okay you can have a maximum of two villagers on any one location and one guard uh, at a single location so if there was another guard was to spawn here he would get sent to one of the the castle towers or in the case of the villagers if there was an additional villager that was sent here then that villager would get put into the castle now, you can have a situation where there's one guard, two villagers, a henchman, and and a villain. You can have that. Okay, that is totally possible. Okay, the only thing that isn't possible would be for, in this case, uh, the hero, or the sidekick, to occupy that same space. The reason is because of Scar. Okay. The villain and the sidekick cannot occupy the same space together. 
So when it comes to him moving or something like that, he would actually just jump over that space and then continue forward. So if he was to move like two spaces, he would skip this one here and then go one and then two or, or, or something like that. Okay. Now let's take a look at the die and go over that. It seems to be a little bit of confusion there with the way how the die actually works. The die is a little confusing because it has a space on it that has both the villain attack and the hero attack on the same on the same side. So what what happens is during combat, if if it's a villain is to roll the die, okay, and he comes up with a slash, that's that's a villain hit. Now in if the sidekick attacks and he rolls the thumbs up then that is a sidekick hit so the way how it works is this right here is attacker's advantage meaning if this is rolled during the villain's attack phase and it comes up like this this is treated as a slash and if it and if it gets rolled during the sidekick's atta attack phase, then it gets uh, counted as a thumbs up, as a hit. So the other uh, sides of the die are going to be the stars, which uh, constitute a miss, and you take a star at, um, uh, on a hero or a villain turn. And... Oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. So it's just the the star uh, constitutes constitutes a miss, and you you pull a star. Now here is the villain card set up the way how they tell you in the instruction book, with stars going all across the bottom, and what's supposed to happen is when you damage the villain, you're supposed to remove one of the stars and take it take it for yourself for your character. Now, the problem that I have with this is if anything ever happens, like you see, like the, these, they just slide like all over the place. Um, and the, the way how I play it is I actually just leave one star on them and then just move it down and then take a star, move it down, take a star, move it down and take a star from the, from the little cup that I have on the side. The other thing that you're going to find on the villain card right here are going to be its uh, special abilities. So if anything special is supposed to happen that you need to be made aware of, it is, it is found here. And then on the back side, during setup, it does have the special instructions for how to set up for the villain. So on the back side, it has the special instructions for setup. And then on the front side, has the life and then any, any uh, special moves or actions that it takes. So the villain decks are composed of the villain cards for the ones that you're playing and what you're going to do is you're going to take both of them um, or actually all of the villain cards and shuffle them together and that makes the villain deck uh, in this case here i have uh, gaston and jafar and you're also going to add these two blue cards now there are a number of these blue cards but the ones that you're going to need and that get played in every game are the two with the castle at the bottom and those cards, whoops, there we go. And those cards are going to be the explosive bridge, which, or I'm sorry, exploding bridge, which that's how those bridges are going to explode, uh, like I had mentioned earlier. And the other is uh, danger rising, which damages your sidekick. And these cards here get played in, in every single game. Now, these other blue cards the uh, four with the exclamation point is the uh, villagers in peril there is four with the shield at the bottom and that's guards on patrol and then the four with the swipes on the bottom villains attack these are used to make the game more difficult so what you do would do is you would take the set of four and add them to increase the difficulty okay so, now as far as the villain cards go, 
there there are there's actually three different types okay there is this card right here which you can see um, has a a picture from the movie and then tells you some very specific instructions as far as what's going to happen with this card once you follow once you complete these instructions here then then the villain turn is over the other two are very similar like this and the way how they work is here at the top you are going to find this exclamation point which means villager now I don't know why they just didn't put a picture of a villager you know like like that with the with the portrait instead they've gone with this exclamation point but this this just means that you're supposed to uh, pick a random villager and put him at this frozen tree or in this on this card here the glacier on the glacier space then um, so that's step one step two is this portion here in the middle which shows what what to do uh, just like the uh, the other villain card except these tend to be a little less dangerous and then at the bottom it tells you the final step so in this case here with a shield that means add a guard to your position, to your location. And then this one here is telling you to move, in this case, Gaston to Lumiere. And you're gonna move him as many spaces as these arrows dictate. And so here you have two, two arrows. So that means you're gonna move him two spaces. If you look at, let's see here. On a card like this, you would move him only one. Now there are um, some villains who do have cards with three arrows, so you would move them three spaces. So that is pretty much the villain deck. And if you look in the instructions, the instructions are going to tell you that the uh, villain turn, draw a card, follow the instructions, discard it. Then it says one, villagers appear, two, danger rises, and three, enemies approach. I don't know why they wrote it out that way. With the, with the way how they should have had it written is draw a card and follow the instructions on the card. Because what they're talking about with the with the one, two, and three, with the villagers appear, dangers rise, and enemies approach, this is they're talking about. Oops, get this a little bit more. They're talking about this type of a card, where this is step one, this is step two, this is step three, but they don't uh, talk anything about the cards that are like this where it has just these specific instructions so I, it's it can be a little confusing the easiest way to think of it is just draw the card and then start at the top and work your way down this is the summary of turn for a villain and this is what i was talking about where it says one two three and then this is your normal basic uh, villain card where it'll have up here the villager appears okay this is this is the first thing uh, the danger rises is this center part here where the villain does some kind of a move or something happens and then down here enemies approach is either movements uh, some kind of a villain movement or the guard appears and then and and it, it gives you a little summary of of it right here but it doesn't tell you that that it only pertains to this card here or like like i showed you before the other card is just a text of what the villain is going to do okay now here is the action phase for your hero or sidekick so you can do any number of these okay as long as you have the available actions for it so like i had uh, shown you earlier here on Gaston, he has four actions, so he can do any of these moves a total of four times. So we're looking at move one space, so he can he can go from uh, one space to another four different times, um, or he can move only one space if he wants to. He can uh, attack a single a single enemy. So if he's on the space with the guard, he can attack that one there. Or he can attack 
adjacent spaces. So you know, like like I said, the the villain and the and the sidekick never s share the same space. So that's so as long as he is actually right next to them, he can do the attack. Uh, the other thing he can do is unlock with five uh, with five stars. So you know, you you gain five stars, you can unlock uh, one of the gates to the castle. And like I said, you, if you have ten stars, you can unlock two of them. Or if you have 15 stars somehow, you can unlock three of them. So that's another thing you can do. The other thing here, um, rescue. You can rescue a villager or your hero. And the last, the last one here, rest. This is probably the single most important thing you can do. Because uh, this allows you, and you can, you can only do this once a turn. This allows you to gain a life, gain a heart. So you, you, you move up that, you know, you move up, um, you know, cause if you're, if you're down here and you're, you're about to die, you know, you, you can gain one life that way, or you can gain one star. I don't know how useful gaining that, that one extra star is from my playthrough. The most important seems to be using the life because you're getting, you, depending on the villain, you're getting hit constantly. So... But that's 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 how the the rest works, uh, and you can only do it once uh, per turn. I forgot to mention earlier that the sidekick works similar to the way how the villain does, where the sidekicks cannot occupy the same spaces together, and the the villain and the sidekicks can't occupy the same spaces together. So in this case here, if uh, Lumiere wants to move, he would have to move either on this side of Gaston or back here or to the space behind uh, Scar here towards a little bit more towards the top uh, I don't know if you can see yeah right up here so those those are the those are the possible moves that he can make or he could go um, also backwards one but uh, as far as uh, Lumiere he, he's not able to occupy the space with Timon and Pumbaa with Gaston or with Scar. And that goes with, with all of the sidekicks. Okay, so now with the hero cards, okay, they're going to tell you to to take the hero cards. In this case here I have Lumi I have Lumiere's cards right here. Okay, and, and they're gonna tell you to they're going to tell you to shuffle them up and then to draw three. One, two, three. The rest of these cards are not needed for this game, so you can go ahead and put them back in the box. Now these three cards here are going to be the cards that you're going to attempt to unlock during the game and they're going to give you these special abilities. And the way how you unlock them is by putting villagers into these little circles that they have on them. Now the the, the instructions say for you to use different colored uh, villagers for to complete them so in this case here I have a blue and then this brownish color okay so this is complete but I can't have wait that's another brown um, and, th and, th and this is another kind of problem with the game is that there's a brown and then then this light tan I guess maybe it's supposed to be orange color um, I think they look they look very similar but um you can't have a scenario like this where there's two with the with the uh with the same color so they would have to be different colors for you to fill and complete the uh the power and once you've com completed the power you discard these back into the um where you have your villagers and then it just goes right underneath and now you and now you have that power that you can play as an action now during your turn you will have the the number of actions that's located here on your on your uh, hero card. This is your life total. Your life is going to go up and down with the with the heart token. Uh, let me grab one here so you can kind of see how it how it looks. Okay, with this heart token like this, it'll go. It's going to go up and down. Once it gets to here, then then the hero is defeated. Now, you have uh, four actions 
uh, for Lumiere, the only character w I think that is different is Tinkerbell with three, and that's because she has a very powerful move action, which is unique to her. So, uh, this is the um, the the special ability that the characters have, and they usually consume stars when it affects another sidekick because you can use your move to assist other sidekicks. Usually, those cost a star, uh, but for when you use it on yourself, that's free. And when you and when you get a hero, well, when you save him you can you just put them on your card and then um, you get an additional action so in this case um whoops not <laughs> not aladdin uh but bell uh, if i had if lumiere had bell then he would get five actions instead of four okay so the first thing that you do okay and then the uh, the villain goes first okay is you turn over a villain card you would take a random villager Okay, um, based off of this card right here, you take a random villager, you put them at this location, which happens to be where Hook is, and that's okay. You do whatever it says um, here in the center. Um, if any sidekick has two or more uh, charms, okay, well, uh, that's a Gaston thing. And then uh, Gaston is going to move towards Lumiere twice. Now, Let's, uh, let me slide this board here really quick so you can kind of see something. Okay, so so if you see Gaston is located up here at the top of the board. Gaston has two moves to make to get to Lumiere. Okay, he doesn't have to take the full two moves. Because Captain Hook is here, he'll skip kept, uh, this space here. He will skip the space where Lumiere is because they can't stay together. And then he will at, he will land at this bottom section right there okay so he'll go um, right and that's that's actually considered one move he doesn't have to move anymore because he's close enough now that he can attack the the sidekick the 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 other thing i forgot to mention was that if let's say hook um let's say a guest on here was defeated and then a Gaston card comes up, then you would skip this card because he's out of the game, and then you would just you would draw a, until it was a Captain Hook, a Captain Hook, or one of the blue cards comes up. The first thing that we would do on the villain turn is to uh, draw a card. Okay, put put the villager. Okay, where where it says do that center portion and then move and then yeah and then move okay and then the villain turn is over then you would move on to the hero turn where you have your four different actions and you can do uh, whatever you want to do you can you can move you can attack you can rescue uh, you can unlock if you're in a position where you can unlock because remember, you have to be in one of the spots with a bridge. So in a scenario like this, Tinkerbell would be able to unlock. And then if she has enough stars to, to do the unlock, and then she would be able to rescue Pan if Pan still needed rescuing. And, and then she'd be able to move. Oh, the other thing that I forgot is that the turn that you save your hero you get an extra move during that turn so you know if the very last thing that she does she moved she did her thing whatever she she attacked and she unlocked you know and, and she has one move left and she rescues pan she will get the extra action and she'll she would be able to you know move away or or do do something that she hasn't done or rest so that's how you play Disney Sidekicks. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. If you like this content, please give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos. I will be doing a uh, playthrough video on uh, Disney Sidekicks here coming up in the coming weeks, as well as looking at some other games. Uh, I do have uh, some Disney villainous that will be coming pretty soon. 
I have a, a couple other Disney games, some Marvel games. I've got a whole lot of content ready to go. So I will see you then. And happy gaming.